myth number two. The second myth is that it's a good idea to communicate whatever's going on. Well, communication is really important, but not, not at any cost. So it works really well when we communicate from a good feeling. So like, you know, when you've had a bit of a disagreement about something and you can just kind of calmly and lovingly say, I don't know what we're going to do about this, but can we have a talk about it, please? As opposed to sort of complaining or banging on about it, then it will work. But it doesn't work when we communicate from a bad feeling. And Mark Tyrrell, who is a psychotherapist, once said, an angry professor is less intelligent than a two-year-old child. Because when we're angry or actually very upset or very stressed, the front part of our brain, the neocortex, goes off goes up, offline and the old part of the brain, which is what we think of as the reptile brain or the monkey brain, takes over. So clearly it's less intelligent, unless we think that crocodiles are more intelligent than people. And well, I won't dispute, I won't debate that one here. Um so if you've got to the point where the communication is really going down the tubes and you're about to launch into a big argument, stop digging. If you're in a hole, stop digging. Because when you start to engage in that, um, that outrageous behavior, you're engaging in the third losing strategy, which is unbridled self-expression, which basically means that you're not holding anything back. You're just dumping it all out. And of course, that actually doesn't help to deepen the connection with your partner. And as my friend Saul would say, you are crocodiling. So you're, and everything is coming from your reptile brain. Oh, can you just hold on a moment while I let some people in? Um, so I'm gonna come on to the second secret tool now, which is listening. Now, most of us don't listen very well. Most of us, when we think we're listening, we're thinking about what we're going to say next. And if you're thinking what you're going to say next, even, whether, even if that's like what advice you want to give this person, or what you could say to make them feel better, you are not really listening. You're actually engaged in your own stuff rather than you're engaging in this, the other person's stuff. But of course you can, we can all learn to listen well, we can learn to listen deeply with nothing on our mind. It takes a bit of practice, but when you get good at it, the other person will feel heard. So that's my second secret tool. And I'll tell you, it's something that's made an enormous difference to me. I, I couldn't be a decent coach if I couldn't listen. And I've got really good at listening to people who are not coaching. So, you know, life has changed. Um, so the second exercise, is to think of a time when you engaged in unbridled self-expression, when you really tipped all that vitriol all over your friends or your partner's head and gave them what for. And what would have happened instead if you had stayed calm and simply listened with nothing on your mind? And again, just take 30 seconds to jot down some thoughts and share in the chat if you're happy to do so.